Okay, so uh, last week we looked at becoming an e-commerce specialist and uh, we were able to look at a number of reasons why we should become e-commerce specialists, uh, including just the statistics that are out there like 4.3 trillion uh, in sales estimation, estimated just for the year 2020. Uh, an increasing rise in sales to over 50% of people who've got mobile phones buying through e-commerce. Uh, there's a lot of statistics proving to us that e-commerce is the way to go. And you're going to see a lot of brick and mortar stores are closing down because many people are preferring their, their things sent to them. Uh, initially, it was something that started in the Western world, but we've seen it in Zambia as well. We've got Ulendo that helps uh, people on e-com in terms of taxi, cab service. We've got Tag, uh, Tagmo Eats. Uh, they're able to deliver for you food. Uh, we've got Afri Delivery as well that does that. They go pick up your food from anywhere where you bought them. They'll, they'll, they'll bring it to you using their application. Uh, we've got different types of courier services that are also getting into the e-com space. So for the most part, people are not going to storefronts. And the new storefronts are applications, websites. And this then gives us an opportunity to be able to make money whilst this is beginning to grow because this is when it's taking a foothold in Zambia. And one of the things you need to know about very wealthy people is that they became wealthy because they caught onto a trend fast. If you just take time to research any person that's really broken the mark, the milestone, most of the times it's because they identified something that people were maybe just hinting on, but these people identified it and they ran with it. Someone says that when you see everyone jumping into the bandwagon, they know that you're already late. I'll say that again. If you see everyone jumping into the bandwagon, like everyone's going for something, they know that you're already late. Right now, there's two people that don't even know where to start with e-commerce. It's still very young in Zambia. There's so many spaces that require e-com. And there are very few people that are doing this. And you improving your skills and beginning to acquire the kind of knowledge that you need to be an e-commerce specialist will not only benefit you for your business, if you're a person that loves entrepreneurship, but it will also allow you to be of value to people around you. Because every person is going to be looking for who knows e-com. And let me tell you why. It's because many of them are going to try it and they're going to keep failing. And they're going to say, why am I doing it right? Because e-commerce is not as simple as just going on Facebook and posting to say, guys, like this, do this and do that. It's got a different uh, setting altogether for you to be really successful. So many people are going to try and they're going to fail. And they're going to come to you and say, I need you to help me with Cheva to understand how I can actually make sales. How are you doing this? And that's what I'm covering here today. I'm not telling you the, the normal things that people will expect. No, go to Facebook and post, 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 post. If I want to tell you to go to Facebook, I'm going to tell you how you should do the posting. Because that whole thing doesn't really work. You know, it's uh, the whole process behind it. There's, there's more to it. I've had the privilege of being able to sit in different e-com uh, positions all the way to order phone when I worked for the Jam platform. We were able to get likes. Uh, we were able to get people to like our page. About 20,000 within just the first week to over 90,000 people on our page. And through that page, I was the one that engineered to say, we do not have to pay for any more stuff. Let's begin to create opportunities with Star Kineco. And I pushed that in and it was adopted. I said, we've got a lot to leverage. And we had those particular stuff happening on the Jam platform. Why? It's because you need to understand e-com is the next thing. But how did we do it? Those are some elements I'm going to share. I couldn't share. I'm going to share a lot of stuff, but I can't share everything right now because I know it will be too much to take in. And that's why we're actually doing a part two. Last week, I built the foundation. And so this week, I want us to go deeper in actually keen to some of these things. So let me get started. The rest will join us. I don't know if they'll join us today, but whoever is here, great for you. Uh, let me get started because I love to keep time. So the first thing we want to look at is what we're looking at building your effective e-commerce sales funnel. All right. And I'm Apollo Lukashi. Um, I happen to be the HVP for Idea Capital Development Entrepreneurs. Uh, that's the head visionary pioneers. And 
Idea Capital Development Entrepreneurs is a new uh, entrepreneurship community. We just launched our first ICD virtual class last week on Sunday, but we've been doing a lot of background work and it stems from my firm, uh, which uh, we together with different board of directors called Make Life International. And we are management mm -hmm. consultants and we help startups, we help medium sized businesses, we help them be able to set shop, we help them be able to organize their systems. So that's what we do. So now I want to move into this session. And let me just ensure that we have a responsive slide. Great. Um, awesome. Okay, so everyone is seeing this. So what are we going to cover this particular evening? I want us to cover three major things. The first thing I'm just gonna go through last week's recap, in case you missed last week, but there's a video that was shared in the WhatsApp group, and I'm gonna hope the team is able to share the link with you so that you can join the WhatsApp group if you're not there, and be able to catch up on the session last week, because I'm not going to get into deep things of last week. I just wanna do a quick recap just touch on the points that we covered. But if you want detail, there's a video that you can go and listen to, and it's exclusive to those in the group. The second thing is the keys to effective sales funnels. So I'm gonna share three keys to effective sales funnels. We're looking at sales funnels today, or let me say this evening. So I'm gonna look at three keys uh, to effective sales funnels. Then the third thing is two stages of your effective sales funnel, okay? So two stages of your effective sales funnel. Just two things. Simple as that. I don't want to make it too big for you. It's gonna, and this is what works. Just two stages. Okay. And we're gonna look at that this evening. If you are ready to get started, just type in the chat box if you know where it is. Say yes, yes, yes. I'm ready. Yes, yes. Just let me see a bit of yeses in the chat box before I move on to the next uh, slide. Waiting for some yes. Since I can get two yeses, three yeses, that would be great. Awesome. Yes, I'm ready. I'm Isaac. Yes, I'm ready from Ucheva. Great. Awesome. Yes, I'm ready from Hong Kong. But great. We can move on to the next slide. I'm ready to. I want. I want you to get to catch on on this. So let's get to move to the next slide now. The first thing we're gonna look at is. What did we look at last week? So this is what we looked at last week. For those of you that didn't join us last week, but you're able to join us this week, we looked at becoming an e-commerce specialist, okay? And we looked at normally five things. So the first thing is why it's important to become an e-commerce specialist. So we looked at a number of statistics, like some of the things I've told you about how there's trillion dollars in estimation. We looked at how people, how e-commerce is evolving in terms of the application. We looked at its relevance in today's world. Uh, then we were also able to look at the types of e-commerce based on the type of transaction. So we're able to talk about the three types of e-commerce that are based on transaction. That's a physical e-com, a service-based e-commerce, and a digital-based e-commerce. I'll go through that again. Physical-based e-commerce, the service-based e-commerce, and the digital-based e-commerce. Physical is any goods and services. If you buy a laptop from Amazon, it comes to you. That's a physical-based e-com. A digital-based e-com, the sites like flipper.com, codecanyon.com, all those sites sell digital products. And people are in such businesses. We're talking about service-based e-com. Look at Kickstarter. Look at, free, uh, at Fiverr, at Upwork. People sell their, their services on those platforms. So those are the three types of e-commerce based on transactions. And we looked at the types of e-commerce based on the parties involved. And when we're looking at that, we were able to key in some very important things. Uh, we were able to look at the B2C e-commerce, which is basically business to customer e-com. Okay, we were able to look at the B2B, business to business. And let me just stop and say this right now. If you want to become wealthy, find a way to have a B2B market. I'll say that again. If you like want to become wealthy, like in the top, top 5% of the world's richest people, begin to consider a B2B market. And let me tell you, let me explain this to you. This is a free bit I'm giving people in this session tonight. If you assess any uh, tycoon that's made it major, their business strategy is almost always B2B. They have a platform that 
empowers businesses to sell to the end customer. Let me give you an example. Facebook is Facebook's biggest money is come from B two B, because when you get on Facebook, you the you the consumer, you're the end user, but they are going to get payments from businesses who are advertising through pages. Okay, so their platform, their biggest customer, or their primary customer is the businessman, is the company, because that's where they make their biggest money from. What about Amazon? Amazon allows you to own a store. Okay, so it means that people who've got stores, the business persons, you can have a store on Amazon, will sell to the end consumer. And guess what happens? Amazon is the most wealthy company today. It's like it's on the top. It's making the most revenues. Why? They've got a B2B framework around it. Now, let me say this. It's okay to start with B2C. It's okay for me to have uh, a saloon and then uh, attend to this person, my end consumer. It's okay to start there. But if you're a person that's telling me tonight to say, look, Papalo, I'm in this session because I'm a winner. I want to make it in life. I want to do great stuff. I want to challenge you. Begin to understand B2B very well. I've studied B2B marketing uh, from LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn Learning. I've studied B2B marketing from different platforms because I have come to notice the relevance in B2B marketing and B2B sales. So that's something I thought I could share with you. Uh, and I hope you pick it up. For those of you in business, those of you wanting to go further, that's my advice for you. I think about that. But let me not um, sidetrack too much from what we're looking at tonight. So I'm doing a recap of last week. Okay. I'm just going to ask. Um, okay, great. So the thumbnail that appeared on the screen. So everyone's video is off. Awesome. Great. All right. So we're looking at last week. So types of e-commerce based on parties involved. I talked about the B2C. I talked about the B2B. Okay, this is a recap. B2B, business to consumer. B2B, business to business. So. I've talked about why you need to be considering a B2B model. And that's simply you selling to a business. And I looked at a number of examples. So take time to listen to last week's session. Uh, the fourth thing I looked at was the forms of e-commerce. I was able to look at the forms of e-commerce. I talked about drop servicing, drop shipping. You know, I looked at a number of stuff that I told you that you should be able to go look at because that's really important for you to understand when it comes to you selling the private label type of e-commerce. Private label is where you start your own store. Uh, for Make Live International, we'll be launching very soon three private label uh, e-com platforms. And we've got our reasons for private label. I shared some advantages of private label last week. Advantages like you own the data that you, you have, uh, you, you, you actually get to have the opportunity to know that it's secure for the most part, you know, and those particular benefits. But it's got difficulties. You have to build the platform from ground up. Uh, so it's got those particular challenges as well and whatnot. Uh, then we also look at e-commerce platforms um, such as Spotify, Amazon. Spotify is owned by Facebook. And you're also able to, just a minute, I see someone put something on the screen. Okay, then someone who wrote, scribbled something on the screen, but you know, that's fine. Um, let me just to do this. Hello, am I clear? Okay, great. Awesome. So the different forms. So I'm going to end here and say, go to the group, if you're not in the group, the team will be posting in the chats so that you can get the replays all the way from the time we started uh, this particular sessions. The last thing was, was, was building your effective sales funnels and we only touched the top. We just barely scratched the top. And I mentioned this is a very important thing that we should learn. And let me, let me just say this, building your effective sales funnel is one of the most important parts about e-commerce. All the things we've covered, we covered last week. Like I said, that was the, those were the basics. That's for you to understand because as an e-commerce specialist, you need to understand your environment. Because you as specialists, you need to understand all these facets of things because they have to work in, in line. But the biggest money-making opportunity lies in building your effective sales funnel. There are actually people that have got an entire business built on conversion specialization. 
And that's actually a new field. Tomorrow I'll be looking at that in the Idea Capital Development Program Mentorship. Uh, I'm gonna be looking at seven opportunities, new opportunities for business that you can actually do post-recession. And one of those things is becoming a specialist, more particularly a conversion specialist. And so let me get into now the meat of today and make the progress. Okay, the meat of today. I still have a lot of things scratched onto my um, my slides. I don't know how to get them off, but anyway, it's fine. So the three keys to effective sales funnels, okay? Three keys to effective sales funnels. When we talk about keys, I don't know what comes to your mind, but I'm assuming a lock and a key or a door and a key. It means for you to be able to enter this door, you need to have those keys, okay? So if this door requires three keys, you need to have all three keys for you to have that door open. In the same way, an effective sales funnel operates with three keys. These three things are the base, the fundamental of any effective sales funnels. And if you rightly coordinate these three, you're going to make money. So sometimes your sales funnel may take up different forms, and I'm going to show you. But these three things should not lack in your sales funnel. Are you ready to go to the next slide? Let me get some yeses. Please show us the three effective sales funnels. Let me get some yeses so that I move to the next slide. I'm going to see if we're following. Do we go to the next slide? Do you want to know the three key effective sales funnels? See, yes, from Isaac, great. Awesome. Please show us, thank you, Han Kombo, great. I'm about to show you this sales funnel. Yes, from Mucheva, great. It's nice to see you all on board and following. Hope you have your, 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 your notes ready. Some of you will take screenshots. I'm not stopping you. Like I said, I just love this crowd and just take it just don't abuse the information you get uh, but i want you to make sure you don't miss what i'm going to share in the next slide it's very important let's move on the first key is psychology and i've looked at this to some base level in the past classes like i said i will always have some level of co of communication to the back and forth because we are building a consistent journey here and that's why the WhatsApp platform is going to be very good for you to be able to revisit some of those sessions. But let me look at psychology today in the sense of your sales funnel. And this is just a few elements I picked. Uh, the first thing is you need to look at the environment, okay, and look at the individual. So now I'm going to talk about these two things, but let me just explain psychology the way I've explained it before. Psychology, this is what makes people behave a certain way? Those of you who studied it, psychology is normally the study of human behavior. So now, human beings, we make decisions mostly because of what we believe, not what we see. It's what we believe. If we believe in something, that's what's going to make us make a decision. It's very hard for us to decide to do something if we do not believe in it. Even though we see it, we can see a flashy thing to say discount, but if we do not believe in it, we won't buy. It. If we do not believe it's something that we need, we won't buy it. And if you want to become very effective in selling, you need to tap into what people believe. You need to understand what does my ideal customer believe? How am I going to bring them to that place of believing? I talked about changing perspective because we talked about how people pay for something based on perceived value. So we said if you want to be paid more, you need to learn how to change perspectives. To change perspectives, you need to understand the psychology behind the behavior of a person. Now, these are two things that normally determine psychology around issues. I talked about normal stuff, but let me look at this. Looking at the environment. It's very important for you to know what's happening in the environment of your target market. Okay? Make sure, not that I'm talking about the target market here. Not the addressable market, not the service market. The target market, the people that you're going to be selling to. You need to know what's happening around their environment. And this is why we are consensus people. I'll say that again. We are consensus people. What that simply means is that we are head people. We are people that move with the crowd. Human beings don't love to feel left out. We always want to belong somewhere. We always want to belong to a group of people. We want to belong to a family. We want to belong to a football club. We want to belong to a school. We want to belong to Unza. Listen. Facebook made their money from this very thing, consensus. 
they started by building it within Harvard, Stanford, and this kept on growing, right? Because people said, oh, my friends are on Facebook. Let me be on Facebook too. So normally it's nice to understand what are people following in this field? What's happening during this COVID-19? Those are questions we've been asking ourselves as Make Life International. What's going on? What's trendy? What are people are subscribing to now? What are the topics people are hungry for? And sometimes to know the topics people are hungry for, you need to go and look for keywords that people are searching in, you know? And you need to understand the environment because it's now cold season in Zambia. And I know one day someone will be listening to this, it's not going to be cold season or whatnot, but right now it's cold season. And one of the things that's very relevant is that people are cold and they're looking to have warm stuff around them. Okay, so that's happening. So people are buying charcoal. Right now the charcoal business is booming. Because people are buying charcoal not just for cooking food, but also to keep their houses warm. So people are selling charcoal like no man's business. And the charcoal business is making money. Why? Right? It's a trendy thing right now. So that's one element to it. The other thing is looking at the individual. Who are they? What do they do? I would have shared with you uh, a persona template. Those of you who bought my book, The Go to Market, you're able to see a persona template. It looks at stuff like your demographics. When you're looking about your ideal customer, talk the demographics of the customer. What's their age? What's their sex? What's their status? Are they married? Are they not married? Do they have a family? You need to understand the individual. Why? Because if you're going to be able to understand what they believe in, you need to understand their demographics. What's their religion? Are they Christian, Hindu, Buddhism? There are certain things Hindu people won't buy because they don't believe in that. So now picture you go and sell to them something that's against their true belief. They won't, even though it sounds great. They will not. And that's why I say these are the three keys. Your conversion door won't open if you uh, substitute psychology. Always understand the behavior. And you do this by looking at both ends. Okay? I hope that gives you a base. Please go and look back at the session that I did on solving the challenges for uh, SMEs in Africa. I looked into perspective a whole lot in that session. So you're going to have a build up on psychology even better. But let me move on because this is not what I'm talking about tonight for the most part. The second key here, um, okay, this was supposed to be a slide, there was a swap. So there's another key, the sales copy. Your sales copy is very important, okay? The art of selling through words. And the third thing is the pitch, the punchline. That's buy now, click below. It's very important, okay? So psychology is the first key. The sales copy is the second key. Your call to action is the third key, okay? Your punchline. And I've already talked about the psychology. What makes a customer need to buy? Notice I use the word need, not want. Need to buy. Why should they need to buy your product? Why should they need to buy your service? Why should they download your app? You need to understand the psychology behind that. Let me make some progress. Now, I talked about psychology. These are some subjects you can understand about writing a good copy. So first to, add, to, to tell you what a good copy is, good copy is simply the art of selling through words. So mostly this is the art of selling through written word. That's what good copy is. It's also known as copywriting. And this is copywriting, not as um, copywriting as an R-I-G-H-T-I-N-G, not that type of writing which is used in books and publications. It's copywriting in the sense of W-R-I-T, and then should be ing you know and that's the type of copywriting we're talking about so this is the art of you selling through words this is what you see when you see a post the words that they've put there's an art to that so this is how you sell even without you meeting someone in person uh, back in the days newsletters that used to come in in box offices back when operations in box offices they used to come that used to also be known as copy Okay, today copywriting has taken a lot of digital forms online through magazines, through Facebook pages. So this is simply how you're going to be able to get your customer to read the first thing, they want to read the second thing, and to they go to your call to action and do what you want them to do. So that particular process is good copy. And these are six things I want you to be able to take note about good copy. One, you must have a great heading. Your heading must be catchy. Uh, in, in Greek words, we would call it the ethos. This is something that's going to stick out to someone and make them have an impression of what you're about to talk about. That's great heading. 
And normally for you to write a great heading, it must be something that makes someone want to stop. So sometimes using the words like discover the next big thing, okay, in this decade. Discover is normally a good word for you to write a great heading, okay? Sometimes some great headings are just how to move from a startup to um, a scaled business because you are being precise. So someone is scrolling through Facebook and they see that and immediately it gets to them. And something to note about a great heading is that it must have the customer in mind. What that means is this. It means that it must be what the customer will get out of it. So if you're selling hair products, is there someone who wants me to use their business as an example? Tell me what you're selling and I'm going to use that. The first person that I'm going to be able to start running through this as an example. Okay. Am I going to see anything in the chat? Um, someone to say what the sale and I can start running through this as an example, live and direct. Let's do this. So far, no one. I'm going to go on and no one. Okay. We're not yet in business or even if you're selling for a company. Let me see what you're selling. Okay, I see Han Combo has put something, perfumes and beauty products. So Han Combo, we are going to use that as, as the example. So a great heading for perfumes. Okay, great. So a great heading for a perfume would be, um, let me put it this way. Get a perfume that, so okay, let me put it this way. Spray once, last seven days, okay? So that great heading, someone is going to be like, let me stop to see this. Spray once, last seven days. Why is that interesting to someone? You are communicating the benefit they will get from this. And for most people, from, I've seen loans, I've seen cakes, okay. I'm choosing for now um, uh, hand covers. <laughs> hand covers example, uh, great. But so spray once, last seven days. So someone who's had a problem, they feel like they sprayed and it disappears fast. They want to buy that. They're going to stop to read that heading and want to know the next big thing. And someone in the loan business, um, some of the things that would catch someone's attention for the loan business would probably be that um, uh, quick loans get in a day, okay? Get your loan in a day. Fast loans get in a day. Could be something like that. Or it could be... Um, get um okay i was going to use something that's similar to something on the back end that would be for more b to b but let me use something that's more b to c here cakes all right so chisimba rosaria was on there too all right so she says cakes so a great heading for cakes if you're looking at a great heading for a cake you're going to think about what people like about cakes so for example some people don't like cakes that um have too much cream okay so now, if that's a customer you're targeting, if your cakes have that as a unique stuff, as a unique uh, value proposition, you can be able to put up something like this. Um, order cakes, okay? Order a cake that has the right amount of cream. As simple as that, you'll be shocked how converting that's going to be. Anyone who doesn't like too much cream on their cake will be your customer. And many people don't understand the power in, in uh, a precise marketing heading. It must really target your ideal customer, your niche. Another heading for a great cake could be um, the sponge cakes. Sometimes it may actually have to be very out there. You may actually put that out to say, we sell, so it could be get good quality cakes. And then you put something to say, not I the sponge I can't hear cake. you. I think Hello, is I that for me? Move the dog or waiting for our teeth. Okay. There's someone who needs to mute their, huh? their mic. Um, oh, I... Okay, let me do that for them. Okay, great. Awesome. Time is moving, so let me move on here. <laughs> I've just realized that. But I hope we're getting, if you have understood, let me know so I move on to the rest. Um, someone can put, and if you've understood great headings, so go ahead and learn how to do great headings. Use words like discover, how to uh, get this. And those are very important. Another great heading is the word free. Okay? Get a free session. Get a free book. It will normally get someone's attention. It's actually one of the most powerful advertisement words is free. But enough about great headings. This can be an entire topic on its own. We actually train it as an entire topic. 
good copy, but I want to build into basics. So another thing for you to note is a great story. So the great story, this is the pathos. This is what helps you now have built this connection with your customer, your end consumer. The pathos, for example, if I'm talking to Bajerabo, I'm going to be able to use language CB, you know, Shan Mupondo, Shan Shan, or say, Ini Niglavia Bapondo, Sten, you know. So that's connecting that. But now to get into the lingo, I'll have to use their words. If they use the words Bapondo, I can't, I can't start using words like Fiat Sumu, Fiat Sumu, Fiat Sumu. No, it won't work for them. So if I understand that those are the kind, the CB guys, those are the kind of customers I have. Even my lingo about the story should be connected to them. But another element about your story is that it must make them feel relatable to you. So I'm going to tell you something right now. For me, I started Make Live as a student, and I'm sure my final year in geomatics engineering. I wasn't always, it wasn't always called Make Live International. And when I started, I, I had an idea. And I went, I took this idea, and I had the privilege of meeting a client. And I talked to that particular client that day, and we were able to have this conversation, and we were able to get a deal. But it wasn't always like that. I had to struggle through growing in becoming a consultant. It's brutal out there. I tell you, one of the things that you know, some of you want to get into the service business, people won't believe you when you're starting. Trust me, even now, people still doubt me. But that's pretty much how it is when you're getting started. But I kept pushing, I kept consistent. And I've been able to make sales now. I've been able to earn from what I do. I've been able to improve lives. But I didn't have all the tools when I got started. Now, what have I done there? I'm, I'm literally teaching you to say a good story must connect with your audience. And that's a true story for me. And it's easier for you to relate with some of these things if you know that the person doing them has been through what you're doing. Let me move on to the other thing, content. Your content, this is the logos. This is pretty much the, what your product, your service will do for the customer. What, what, what uh, are its particular functionalities? So if you're in a loan business and you're talking about content here, it could be about how they get 5,000 up to, to 20,000 um, in loans, okay? That's the content of your loan business. It's being precise on what they'll get, what's in it for them. And with content, it could be when you get these perfumes, uh, this particular brand of perfumes that you're getting. This particular perfumes last longer with a better fragrance. Uh, this type of perfumes, uh, you can get a different scent uh, each and every time. Like maybe say after a month, it keeps on upgrading. It's, it's got this flavor shifting. It's everyone's going to create such a perfume. I would want to buy it, you know. Maybe a perfume that has got seven different levels inside it. The first level, after you spray it, it turns to the next. And you get seven in one. Please, those of you who have such an idea for me, I think that's a great, grand idea. So one perfume does that. So that's the content about your perfume. Um, let me move on. Smooth transition. So you've had a great heading, great story, content. The smooth transition, this is where you get someone to understand the value of what you're selling. You're doing hairstyles. So you've told them about how your customers are happy, and everything in the content of the story, but now you want to tell them that you charge 400 kwacha to do weave and plate it for them. That's a huge amount of money. So how do you get someone to pay you 400 kwacha? You have to transition them after you've built this relationship. And transitioning, you do this by being able to make them see the value they get. Last week, I asked you, I asked you and I asked um, one of the mentorship classes I was taking to say that if I found a way to be able to make you, help you make a hundred thousand kwacha, would you be willing to pay me 10,000? I want to see your, your responses. If I found a way to make you make 100,000 kwacha, you didn't know about this, would you be willing to pay me 10,000? If I tell you I'm going to do this for you and you're going to make 100,000, but I'm only going to ask a 10,000 kwacha, would you be willing to give me that amount, to give me that job? Someone tell me, someone tell me in the box. Let's see. If I was to going to help you to make 100,000 kwacha, would you be willing to pay me 10,000? If you didn't know about what I'm going to show you, would you be willing? So far, I'm not seeing anything in the chats. Okay, let's see if I'm, get, I'm getting some. Someone says, yes, thank you, Tisa. Um, 
Okay, that I saw a no. <laughs> that Simba says no. I get uh, in between hand combo. Okay, yes. Okay, great. I love that we've got yeses and we've got another one telling yes. Someone is thinking. Okay, Andre's thinking. Okay, great, guys. <laughs> so I know I got some yes, yes. I've got an in between. So far, the vote leans more on the yeses. And if we're looking at percentage, I think the S is about 60%, and in between takes about 20, and I know it takes about 20. So the conversion is higher. So now let me explain, maybe I wasn't that clear. So what I'm trying to tell you is this. If I'm going to add value to your life, and the money that you're going to make from that value is not money you would have made without my help, it's easier for you to make that change. And let me explain to you. My first contract, I designed a project proposal for a company into a new stream of income that they didn't know they could be able to get into. And we did the math, the monies to be made were in the millions. And so I was able to make my charge a small percentage of that to be paid gradually as we did the work. And what I'm trying to communicate to you is this, people don't mind paying money if they know that the overall gain is better. Do you know why ladies are going to take time to really look good when they're going out and everything? It's because they know the value they're going to get from looking good. You know, it's going to open doors for them, you know, and in as much as spending a certain amount of money may seem like, oh, why, why do they spend a thousand plus on a weave? The overall benefit outweighs the initial cost. And that's something you should understand about transition. You always struggle at pricing if people can see the overall benefit outweighing the cost. I hope we have got more clarity there. So I'm going to ask again. I'm going to ask, Shimba, would you be willing in that situation? Because I saw that they know. If you understood now, would you be willing to pay? If you know that the overall benefit greatly outweighs the cost. Let me get some traction in the group. Like say yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, other people. Andrew. <laughs> Do we get a yes from Andrew without a thinking face? <laughs> I'm loving this theme. Certainly, yes. Okay, great. Thank you. So then it means that I've done my job to communicate the transition. So your smooth transition is always bringing back value to your customer. You always need to make them realize why they're paying, why they're paying for. You normally don't ask certain questions about value for certain things to really know the cost match. For example, when you go into a store, you want to buy a car. You don't ask, why is this car at 100,000 kwacha? Because for the most part, you're going to say, oh, for them to manufacture this car, they spent on the engine, the frame, the everything. So if you understand where the money went, you will then understand why it's at that price. It's the same thing. So sometimes people need to just understand this is valuable because you spent thousands and thousands. I've paid for courses. Literally what I'm teaching you, I've learned, I've practiced, I have taken years. This is of value. If I was to sell this to you, I trust you, you would want to pay. And this is something that I do so others pay. I don't know, for some reason, I love entrepreneurs and these things are free, you know. <laughs> and the call to action. Let me go to that quickly because I know time is moving and I love to end exactly on time. Uh, this is where you make the sale. This is a clear, precise ask. Okay? And that's the next thing. I'm not going to do step into this. But a good copy will always factor in the call to action. But there's an entire, the third key is call to action itself, and I'm going to tell you why. The sixth thing is it's a cycle, so repeat it. When you get your first customer, you're going to grow your customer base. Consistently repeat these things. Always have a great heading for them each time, a great story. Always keep on running them through your sales good copy. Let me make progress so that we are able to do so much today. <laughs> and we can make progress to the next slide. Your call to action. These are just things you must understand. It must be clear. It must be visible. It must be obvious. And these are different. Clear, this means that someone must be able to understand it. So if you put up a post on Facebook, it could be click the link below. That's clear, right? You know that, oh, after this, the next thing someone wants you to do is click the link below. Sometimes your call to action can be buy now. Okay? That's a clear call to action. 
at times we do very well. We have a great head dean. We've got a great story. We've got great content, but we never ask. And the Bible says this, ask and you shall receive. You know what I've said? I get an amen. Sorry, I come from a Pentecostal background. You know, but ask and you shall receive. It's true. You need to have a call to action. If you've ever put up a post and you forgot to tell people what you want them to do, if you want to promote your face, your YouTube page, I've seen, um, uh, I've seen Aaron do this when he promotes the Eska Arts pages. He says, click the link to like our YouTube page. It's very important. There must be a call to action. Without a call to action, it means whatever you say just stays hanging. Your customer hasn't been guided on what to do next. So always be able to remind them. After you do a powerful pitch through your copy, what's the call to action? What do you want me to do from now? You've told me about this product. What do you want me to do? Sometimes it can be register now. We've done events as Make Life. We've done um, two major events, the Idea Capital Development, both 2018 and 2019, and sub events. And we always have a call to action. I told you these are things I do. And we've raised in the thousands in those conferences, I tell you. The first conference alone, we were able to raise over 20,000. And we planned that within two weeks. That's money. And how did we get a lot of those particular customers? We had call to actions. Buy the ticket. Buy it now. We were able to have registration processes. It's about you having call to actions. Very, very important. Um, must be visible. And that was the second one we actually get to raise more money. You, you improve as you go. So it must be visible. If it's online, like a website, I'm going to show you quick some pages at the end of this uh, for landing pages when we get there. But it must be visible. It must be somewhere someone can see. Okay? So your call to action must be visible. Very important. It must be obvious. It mustn't be something someone won't understand. Don't tell them to say, um, you should uh, follow me. Okay, follow you. Okay, I don't know what that means. It must be obvious. You shouldn't leave someone thinking, what did they mean by follow me? Be clear. Click to follow us on Facebook. Be very obvious, okay? Let me move to the next thing. Two stages to an effective sales funnel. And I'm gonna go through this. That's very important. The two stages to an effective sales funnel. Number one is lead generation, okay? Lead generation. That's the first stage to an effective sales channel. Your sales funnel should generate leads. And these are three things you must have about your highly converting in terms of leads. So one, you need to understand the traffic sources, okay? Understand traffic sources. So picture it like this. ShopRite is a store, a physical store, right? And today we're talking about e-commerce stores. So e-commerce stores normally are built on websites, storefronts like Amazon, Spotify. Go back to last week's session and understand the type of e-commerce platforms. So that's why your store is. Now, customers for, 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 for ShopRite to get people to their shop, when they were opening at, at East Park, they're able to put a big billboard sign on Great East Road saying, we are now open. When you go to East Park, they had signs all around, we are now open. So they understood where their traffic sources were. On the roads, Great East Road, in the corridors in East Park. And what did they want to do? Is they wanted to direct the traffic to their store. It's the same thing online. People are online today. There's traffic online. There are people moving in and out of certain spaces. And I know LinkedIn is, isn't spent right, but anyway. Uh, so these are some of the major platforms that have got the most traffic. Facebook, by far, has got a lot of traffic. It's one of the top traffic sources for many e-commerce businesses. Most of the uh, sales on Facebook, uh, the most of the, the sales in e-com, Facebook accounted for 60% of all, this, all the sales, 60 plus percent of all the sales made through a social media platform, a Spotify platform, 60%. It's got a huge traffic source, and some of you are already using that. LinkedIn, there are people, that, especially if you're into business services, begin to build your LinkedIn uh, traffic base. It's a great platform. Instagram, it's also great for businesses. YouTube, YouTube has made people millions. PewDiePie, PewDiePie, PewDiePie is, has got the largest following on Facebook. He's got in the millions, and he's a millionaire. 
uh, there's this particular person called the Beast. You know, he's a very interesting guy who just gives away a lot of stuff. And he's also got in the millions and he's a YouTube millionaire. In Zambia today, I've got some friends who have gone onto YouTube and they're doing fine. It's something that we haven't started doing as Make Life yet. Uh, we're just building the base right now. But it's also something we intend to include on our YouTube, um, on our traffic sources. But it's very important to understand the YouTube base. I've seen, I've seen his cards working on building that, the YouTube today. They just hit 100 plus subscribers. Congrats to them. And you need to understand that as your traffic source. Google Ads, very, very key way of doing this. Google Ads, there are two. There's Google AdMob and there's Google AdSense. Okay, Google AdMob and Google AdSense. Google AdMob is the one which is used on the applications. If you have a mobile app, like share it, and you see all those adverts coming to you, that's Google AdMob. And when I talked about the platforms last time, I talked about using a WordPress platform. WordPress has got plugins that allow you to actually integrate a Google AdMob account, and you generate that. One of our platforms that we're working on, Kumbuka Loans, as Make Life, and I'm gonna show you its landing page. Uh, we've, we are integrating Google AdMobs for that, Facebook ads as well for that. It's because we are integrating it in our platform. Why? Because we want to take people from the traffic sources to the actual site to carry out the transaction. The other thing is choosing your attention grabber. Very key. You know where the, source is, the sources are. Now what you want is to have an attention grabber, something to make them stop. Remember, the attention span for people is reducing by the moment by the years. People only pay attention for bare seconds. So you want something that's going to make them want to stop. We already talked about your great heading. Now, at times your great heading is great because of the offer that's there. And sometimes it's because of the words. So some of the things that you can actually have for your attention grabber is one, an article. Now that article for your heading, remember copy, I said those are the keys. They operate in the source funnel. So every time I talk about from lead generation, keep on remembering psychology, good copy, and call to action. Okay? They are consistent in the stages for your source funnel. So now, writing a good article is one way for you to grab an attention. There's a certain person, an entrepreneur, that posted a great article. And because of that great article, people started following him or to his page. And they decided to buy his product. There's a session that I did uh, just here in Unzapreneurs uh, some weeks back uh, about um, the 10, the 15 qualities for a house sales product. And one of the reasons I did that, I specifically, because I'm, I'm, an, I'm, an e I'm an e commerce specialist as well in one of the things that I do. I wanted to specifically see how an article approach affects people's attention. And we're able to see a spike of 100% in attendance in that particular session. So I deliberately did that. I deliberately added certain keywords and then we're able to see the people join in that particular session was higher. Why? Because the article keyed in a lot of stuff. Go look at that on my page, Mapalo Lukashi. See what I did with that. Sometimes I deliberately don't go on article approach because for me, I'm always on a learning curve and trying to see what's working because for me, this is the other making, the other expert side of me. There's also Facebook boost graphic. This is where you just have a simple graphic that has got keywords in its heading. And then you have attached a link to your website and you boost that. Why it's supposed to, why it's a boost graphic? Facebook does not allow you to boost any graphic that has too many words. Those of you who've done Facebook boosting, you can't like the, 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 the poster I did for this particular session. We can't boost that because of the type of words there. So it can be boosted. So sometimes if you want to boost for an event, whenever I'm doing an event, I've come to learn we use mostly a graphic with a catchy word, but then the rest is on the back end, the landing page, which I'm going to show you. So sometimes it's just a nice graphic to catch the attention of your people. The other thing is a controversial approach. This is why you say something controversial and people begin to come and post. This is normally an approach people are afraid of. And for some time, uh, I'm going to tell you this. There are certain people who would say started very controversially, and I'm not trying to support what they did. But what they started is they did something that the whole world is going to react to. But today they've got foundations. This is in Zambia. They've got foundations backed. 
it's because they did something controversial. Controversy, people like controversy. People like things that are not with the norm. And if you put up a controversial ad, sometimes you just put up something like, uh, why all people who are bored, you know, da, 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 da. And it's a controversy. And you're, this, you're in this uh, hair business, you know, this barber shop business, and you put a post about people being bored. And you put a controversial statement with that. The conversation that will come is going to amplify your platform. How many of us are following someone or went to look at a name because of a scandal on Facebook? You followed them. Now, something to note about a controversial approach is that it must be legal. Make sure you are very legal, but it may be a way to actually work. Facebook did way more better when they had the law case. The controversy boosted them up. There was these competitors, there's these two guys that were in a, competi in a competition. And so one of the law firms decided to sue them to say they've copied us. And so as they were suing them, people began to now follow them because these guys were having a faster conversion rate. And before they knew, the, the number of subscribers that are subscribed to that application rose high. And the law case still failed, the guys won, and that's how this business was boosted. So that's one way. And I see time is not with us. The free digital product approach. Sometimes you can offer a free ebook to get an attention. Free consultation, a free consultation call. It's very important. So people put in and they get a consultation. I did this online. I, touched, I, I worked with an article and a call and I got people to subscribe to my Calendly and I called them and was able to discuss with them. Today, that's some, some of, one of the ways we gain clients on the consultancy bit. We give you a free consultation and then after we give you a new value, you, if you want more help, you have to pay for the extra services. So I've given you that. Then video presentation is one of the most effective ways for you to sell. This is a short video. You run your copy from introduction, good story, all the way to the content, but quickly you have a transition and your sell. Video presentations are great. If you can present in a video, that's great. This is very, very key. Your landing page, it must be converting and clear. I'm going to ask right now, because I've never done this, if it's okay that I spend 10 more minutes to finish this up. But if all of you, if you refuse, then I'm going to have to stop this here, but I'm not going to finish stage two, and I'm, going to, I'm not going to show you the landing pages. So can I see if it's okay with everyone to take in? Give me just 10 more minutes for this. Is it fine? Can I see some yeses? Um, I can see yeses coming in. Okay, yes, yes. I need to get at least five, three yeses. I've only got three, four yeses, okay. Five, okay, great, thank you so much. So let me now finish this up, your landing page. Your landing page is a major thing for your lead generation. And this is why, thank you for the yeses to coming in. And this is how you actually make money online. Your landing page, let me show you some stuff right now. Uh, quickly. Right now, what I'm showing you is a landing page that we've done as Make Life for Kumbuka Loans. Now, I want you to look at it for a moment. Read it, okay? What's, what does it say there? The small and medium business crowdfunding land, loan, loan. Already when you get to this platform, you are going to be told what it's about. We are very clear who our clients are. We, this is for small and medium businesses. It's not for you who wants a personal loan. So the small and medium business crowdfunding loan platform. You already know that this is a crowdfunding platform. So your landing page must be precise. It must speak to your precise customers. And here it's a double-sided market. There's the investor and there's the business. So the next statement is saying, we connect investors with small and medium business owners in their community looking to scale their businesses. That speaks into them. Then get to earn on interest returns on your investment, pay back monthly over a set duration. Come on, we've just told you what this does, but it doesn't end there. Notice there are three buttons. On the top right, there is how it works. At this point, someone will be like excited. Okay, how does this work? When they click that button, guess what? they find videos that tells them how this works. If someone is coming to this page for the next time or the second time,
They've got buttons that immediately make them convert. Invest now. Pitch your business. It's clear to the point, and that's what your landing page must do. Your landing page must convert. It doesn't have to take, it doesn't have to take them to too many options. It's just what you want them to do. You see our major options are just invest now, pitch your business. Why? It's because we have got two customers here. We've got the supply and the demand side. But if we only had one customer, we're only going to have one button. Sometimes your landing page may be just for you to get an email so that you get them back. These are, let me show you some more landing pages by others. And these I give, let me give credit to uh, Leon from the Lions. Then this is some of the stuff they worked on. And these are converting sales landing pages for websites. You see specific wording there, but you're able to get the name, email, contact number, occupation of your client, and you get the call to action, get my free quotation. Very clear, very precise. It specifies who it's dealing with. Here, call us now. So what do you want people to do when they come to your page? On, for Kumbuka Loans, which is a Make Life product, we want people to invest or pitch. That's what we want you to do. So it's the first thing you're going to see when you get to the site. These guys, they want you to be able to get a free quotation or get a free call. Let me move on. Here again, contact Leon below. Name, email, send. This is what they call landing pages. Landing pages convert more. The average conversion of a website is just 2.5, somewhere there percent. But with a landing page, the conversions go all the way up from 60% to 100% conversion of the people that visit your site. So you must have a way. So now on Facebook, if you've got a small, like I talked about, a graphic, a graphic boost, when people click, it's either it takes them to a landing page on your site or just a landing page that exists. There's, if you want to have, if you want us to help you get this, get in touch with me, we'll be able to work with you. If you want this for your company, says, I don't want just to know this, but I want someone to set this up for me. Call us. We're going to set for you a nice deal. Make Live International. We're going to be able to do that. You can reach me through the WhatsApp group entrepreneurs and I'll text you because of the channel that we're using and I'll be able to get in touch. If you want to have an effective sales landing page, we'll help you do that. And quickly, you make, let me just do the last hope of following. Because of time, you make your sale. That's the second stage of your sales conversion. You make your sale. And remember, there are three keys to your sales funnel, psychology, sales copy, and what was the last thing? The call to action. So now when you make your sales, those three things are still relevant. After you've got your leads, you've got their emails, you've got their phone numbers. Let me show you. Remember that? The next thing is that you want to make your sales. So you need to follow up on your customer. If it's buy now, that was the option. You want to follow up after that. So if they, if they click buy now, you must be able, the next thing is you must be able to tell, tell them to your payment gateway. It must be how they make that payment. When we were running speech power class as Inspired Dreams and I was helping with the conversion, we had a form that people filled in. They gave us their details and immediately I called them. That year I got speech power had to have more people attend that were new customers. Why? Because after the lead generation, we lead generation at the end of the day, you want to have their contact, their detail. But sales, you want to make sure you drive it home. Let me go back. So something to note here is your prospect experience. Your prospect is someone who's not yet your customer. Remember, they're just almost becoming your customer. So how you treat them is very important. So if they sign up with you, and I learned this from someone, says, your response time should be shorter. Call them sooner. Don't wait one week before you reach out to them. Text them, WhatsApp, WhatsApp them, if that's the platform you're using. Okay? Follow up sooner. Shorten your response time. Don't be late. When people are subscribing to your events, there's a list. Make sure you start calling them. Don't end up just getting their names and thinking they'll attend your conference. You need to make follow up. It's very important. And another thing is your customer and user experience. Remember I talked about repeating the process. It means that you must consistently take care of them. The user is someone who ends up using it. Sometimes your user and customer are not the same. So if it's an application like Facebook, it's how we relate with it. Ulendo, how we relate with it as a user. But the customer can be someone else altogether. Because of time, I've ended here.
that ends my sharing. Let me get some questions and responses uh, before it hits 40. I hope we've learned today. I hope people have learned. How many people are excited? How many people want to become and go do these particular things that we've taught them? How many people feel more confident about approaching uh, e-commerce now? So let me get some responses. So how many people are like, okay, this was worth it. This is something. I've learned something. I'm not going to be blind when I go out there. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew, there for the hand. Great. So let's see you going to make a difference. Thank you, Chishimba. Let's see you going to make a difference that when you do your events, run them through these things. Remember, there's the psychology. The copy should be right. The call to action should be right. If you want to sell to e com different platforms, it must be right. It was worth it, and I'm blessed for the night. Thank you. I'm excited about it. It's worth it, and I'm waiting for next week. Thank you so much. Great. Awesome. It's great to see all those great responses from you. So uh, if you're not in the WhatsApp group, the link has been posted. Make sure you join the Entrepreneurs WhatsApp group. My phone, my, my laptop is, is a bit low. Let me just make sure it's charging uh, so that we don't lose our recording. Okay, great. All right. Awesome. Okay, so make sure you join if you're not already in the group. Let's make sure we invite people next week. This is a free platform. We don't over advertise it. We just want people to be able to bring others on board. Because if you over advertise it, then everyone will know these things. Then it won't be unique for you anymore. So, but we want to see how many of you can be able to bring your friends together. So make sure you invite someone next time. Make sure you attend. Next week's session is also going to be epic. It's something very important that you should participate in. And I'm going to share something in the group as well. So those of you who want to join me in the other platforms, I'm hosting an ICD Entrepreneurs meeting tomorrow on Sunday. So you're all invited. And I'm looking at the seven new opportunities for business and work post-recession. I'm going to tell you seven of them. Very important. So if you're going to be interested, make sure you also jump on, on that particular session. I'm going to hand over to Aaron Mondoka and his team uh, from Unza Preneurs to conclude this session for us. Thank you so much. See you next week. Aaron, over to you. All right. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Mapalo. That was a very powerful session. And my apologies for coming in late. I, I challenged my internet side. And thank you, everyone, for. I can see Tisa, um, Shimba, Ankombo, Isaac. I'm free, Andrew. Thank you for coming through. Uh, please, guys, next week, at least let's invite some people to come on board. If you've seen, this is some valuable information which everyone must uh, have. Yeah, but please invite those who are serious and are ready to learn and scale up their businesses. Once, once I thank you for coming through. Uh, we'll see you next week. And for this video, I'm going to post it in the group, or rather, the link in the group. To, to, to our YouTube channel. This link is only for you guys, the group. It's only exclusive to you guys. No one can access that uh, video apart from you. I think. Thank you very much. Anything? Tisa asked, uh, Chisimba asked a question at how do we follow up tomorrow's meeting? So, like I said, the Zoom link and ad will be shared in the WhatsApp group that's been shared, the Entrepreneurs Webinars so that you can be able to also access that meeting. So it will also be shared in the WhatsApp. Okay. All right. Uh, I know it's just, just a reminder for us and everybody to us just invite a friend. Next, just, next time they come through for the meeting. All right. Is there anything, anything you have to say? Shimba, anything? Contributions, suggestions? You can you can speak to you. You can unmute your mic. Andrew, anything you have to say? Contributions, improvements?
Um, I just want to suggest that we should to apply everything to many here. And yeah, we should try to fail as much as we can. Uh, kindly repeat yourself. I was saying we should try to apply everything that we're being taught on this platform. Uh, all right, thank you, thank you, thank you. Should uh, take no, us something as a result. Yeah. Isaac, anything? Yeah. Hello, you're about to get me? Yes, I'm about to get you. All right. Uh, all I can say is uh, you should just keep up with the good work and we look forward for tomorrow. For tomorrow's program, even next week, then invite other people as well. So right. Thank sure. you. Chimba, Chimba, to your voice. Tisa, I need to hear your voice. I need the lady to say something. Okay. Um. For me, I'm just grateful and to have been part of this today. I have learned so much and I just can't wait to apply everything I have learned. Yes. So I'll be going back to my notes. To and I'm excited for I know there's more to come. And yeah, next week I'm going to invite more people. So thank you very much. Uh, do I conclude the meeting now? Okay. Um, thank you everyone for being there. So more to come in the group. And the recording will be posted like, like Aaron said. Thank you guys. We can go goodbye. Bye bye. Bye bye.